Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, gonna be doing uh, some no prep class five restorations for aesthetics. This is a patient that we saw uh, at an exam and we said, uh, we looked at the front teeth and we said, hey, we can make these things look nicer if you want uh, without using a drill. And they said, sure, let's do it. So we basically just used, uh, we packed some cord, uh, the footage down here, packed cord, pumiced the surface of the teeth, um, applied some Fuji to light cure and uh, shaped it. And then that's uh, how we, uh, where we ended up. So we'll go over the whole procedure here, step by step. We're going to grab some cord that we ultra pack size one, pretty much the only cord that I'll use. Um, soaked in an astringent and then cut it into a little segment that is about the right length for the buccal surface of the tooth. We're going to pack that into the one one first. This is abfraction that uh, typically will say to patients never needs, it's never indicated to restore it unless it starts to decay, which it rarely does, or um, is very sensitive and uh, it's bothersome to the patient's um, ability to function. So this was for aesthetics. We pitch the idea and they say, sure, let's do it. So uh, we'll get them in, we'll freeze. And um, this is a procedure that takes half an hour, very high yield um, for aesthetics um, compared to how inv non-invasive it is. Um, this cord is going to be a little stinker, so we'll pack it into the sulcus once we get um, get the first little bit down. And then uh, the next step is just going to be to pumice the uh, surface of the teeth to clean um, to clean any plaque or pellicle off in preparation for bonding. And we're just going to use a resin modified glass ion or cement Fuji 2. And once we have given it a once over with pumice and a polishing cup, then we'll give it a thorough rinse and it's going to be ready to uh, condition for bonding. And I like to use a five second phosphoric acid etch for my glass um, based restorations, which is all I really use, just Fuji and Equia. I haven't bonded composite in probably over three years. And um, see, I see better outcomes with um, having uh, given up composite. So that's what I like. We're going to etch for five seconds with phosphoric acid here. So quick five seconds on all three teeth, rinse it thoroughly, and then we'll actually dry it quite thoroughly as well. This is the level of dryness that I'll leave it. And then we'll apply the material overfilling and then I'm going to pack it in with a moist cotton pellet to ensure that it uh, is well adapted to all of the margins that we're going to be applying it to. So we'll just adapt it here. Lots of excess. The thing about using this material compared to composite is that um, yeah, it's it's much easier to overfill and then trim back as opposed to shape uh, to the exact uh, dimensions of the final restoration. So we'll adapt it and then we'll light cure it and then right away we'll get into uh, trimming it and using this fine diamond. It is a softer material so it um, trims back uh, quite easily. Uh, but then again, it doesn't need to be very hard because it's not an occlusion and it's much stickier than composite. So, and it doesn't leak. It has a much more intimate bond interface than composite uh, because it's chemically bonded to the tooth. So this is going to look a lot better, uh, in my opinion, than composite right off the bat. It's going to last longer. It's not going to fall out and um, it's not going to leak. It's going to look the same in 10 years as it does the day that it's placed. Um, approximately so we'll uh finish trimming here this is definitely the most tedious part of the procedure the most time consuming part and we'll use a um we'll use the find diamond flame on the high speed for most of it with uh, water irrigation and then we're going to switch over to a soft flex disc and um finish our contouring trying to get all the way down to the gingival margin and just kind of pressing in from the outside makes a nice natural looking contour and of course it turns chalky white uh, when you are um, adjusting it without uh, a high speed making it very easy to see the 
margins of the uh, of the restoration and uh, and the excess material that still needs to be reduced. So we'll fast forward through this. Like I say, kind of using the technique of just pushing from the outside inward to make a nice round uh, natural looking contour. And uh, the patient's gums are going to be irritated for a couple of days, so we can tell them that when the freezing comes out, gums will be sore a little bit, and then uh, will go away within a couple of days. And then we're going to use a fine diamond, uh, or sorry, a uh, flame, a carbide flame on the high speed to make our um, refining adjustments to the margins there. And then once we're satisfied with the shape, there's actually a trick that you can use um, in terms of shading where you can moisten the material and see what base shade it's going to look like. And if you picked too white of a color, then you can use uh, Equia Coat because it has a little bit of yellow um, color character in it. Or if it looks bang on, um, as it does um, when it's moistened, then you can just use an unfilled resin bonding agent to coat the material so that it feels smooth to the patient's tongue. And I believe that in this case, we used a unfilled resin bonding agent and um, we ended up with a good, uh, a good result. The patient was happy, we were happy. A note about the before and after photo is that the, um, maybe I'll make that point once we get to the, uh, to the final uh, screen with the before and after. Just going to fast forward through the rest of the footage here. We're going to coat with an unfilled resin bonding agent before removing the cord. Jackie's going to cure that. Sometimes I'll air thin it. Jackie's going to cure that and then we'll remove all of our cord. And then that's pretty much going to be it. Um, the point that I was going to make about the before and after is that um, it looks whiter um, than, uh, than it actually does in real life. And the reason for that is because the teeth dehydrate slightly. So um, once a couple of weeks have passed and the gums have healed and the uh, teeth have rehydrated, it's going to look a lot more like this just with um, the abfraction lesions filled in. And like I say, abfraction is a uh, phenomenon that I... Uh, generally don't advise restoring unless uh, it's for aesthetic reasons or um, sensitivity reasons um, because, uh, yeah, it's just not necessary. All right, that's it for that one.